Welcome back to Honest News Network. Brothers and sisters, I've got some wonderful things to share with you from God's Word. This is going to be a tremendous study of God's Word, so I hope you are ready to learn. I hope you're ready to study God's Word. We're really going to get into uh, the study of the harvest, understand the seasons. I want to help God's people to understand the, the, the harvest. I want you to understand the, the different parts of the harvest so that you can understand where we are. So, with no further ado, let's get into the Word. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, beginning with verse 12, it says, The flowers appear on the earth, and the time of the singing of birds is come. The voice of the turtle is heard in our land. The flowers appear on the earth. Why is that significant? This is speaking of the barley, folks. That's why it's significant. Are you listening to me? This is the barley. The flowers appear on the earth. So let's step back a verse. Let's go back to Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 10. My beloved spake and said unto me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. <clears throat> For lo, the winter is past, and the rain is over and gone. Why is that significant? <clears throat> Let's go to a chart. I want you to see a chart here. And uh, you're going to understand why this is so important in a moment. So this is the beginning of the harvest between September and October. Plowing begins. And this is obviously the Jewish or the Hebrew calendar. And uh, this is the first rains that take place. And then between October and November, there is some planting that takes place. And this is the barley that is being planted between October and November. Isn't that interesting? What, what month are we in right now? I'm not trying to say that we're looking at it that way, but what I'm saying, it is kind of interesting that we are in this month right now, right? Between October and November, where, where the barley is being planted. Then you go down to November between De November and December, the grain planting continues. And then between December and January, in the 10th month, is the main rains, or the former. Or actually, this is the moderate rains. So the beginning between September and October, the, this is the former rain. And then the moderate rain takes place between December and January. And we keep on going down to February, between February and March, and we see the spring rains. So now understand, we're not looking at the months, okay? as far as spiritually. In the physical, we're looking at the months, but spiritually, we're looking at the principle. How many know that? 
It's very important you understand that. We're not supposed to be looking at the months, the days, the years. Amen? We're not supposed to be observing days, months, and years. Paul the Apostle made that very clear. So we're looking at the principle here. So it's the former rain, the moderate rain, and the spring rains. Now notice what it says in Song of Solomon. <clears throat> Let's go back to that verse again. What does it say? For lo, the winter is past. That means December or October, November, December. All this is past. Winter is past. And the rain is over and gone. That means the early rain, the moderate rain, and the latter rain. Hello? And then the next verse says, The flowers appear on the earth. The time of singing of birds is come. And the voice of the turtle is heard in our land. What is significant about this verse? The flowers appear on the earth. The rain is over and gone. Folks, look, look at, let's look at the calendar again. <clears throat> if If the rain is over and gone, that means we're now spiritually between February and March. The beginning of barley harvest. Are you listening? Isn't it interesting the Holy Ghost had me giving a message a few months ago about the almonds. Remember? The almonds has to do with being awake, to be aroused, to be alert. And now we look at between March and April spiritually, and we're at barley harvest begins. That's where we are right now. The rain is over and gone. See, the early rain was Pentecost. Since Pentecost, there's been some moderate rain. Now, how many know we are in the time right now of the latter rain? Are you listening? So we're in the time of the spring rains and the barley harvest. Somewhere between January and March, well, between January, yeah, between January and April, somewhere between Sabbat and Aviv, between the 11th month and the first month. Now, isn't it interesting that God says, listen, what did God say about the first month? Let me see if I can look this up because I don't have that verse handy right now. And I, and I, it just came to me. I was looking at it earlier and I didn't add this into the study and I should have, but let me go ahead and find it real quick because it's very important that we add this into the study. Hallelujah. Praise God. Please bear with me, folks. The first month. Hallelujah. What did the Lord say about the first month? I can find it. Hallelujah. It's talking about the rain, the latter rain in the first month. Let me see if I can find this. I don't want to go any further until we get this verse because the Holy Spirit just brought it back to my remembrance. Please, please bear with me. I apologize. Just have to hold tight there and, and be patient with me. Um, 
So, hallelujah. Let's try. Ah, wish I could find this verse right now. I can't find it, but I do want to say this. There's a verse in the Old Testament scriptures, I believe, and it says in the first month that the latter rain and the the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Maybe, maybe somebody can find that verse. I will try to find the verse for you, and I will put it in the description of the message. Um, we'll... I just, I hate that I don't have it handy right this moment. But it says in the first month, the latter and the, uh, the, the latter or the former rain and the latter rain together in the first month. Now, look at this calendar in front of us. What is the first month? Barley harvest begins. So why is that significant? For the, early rain and the latter rain together because this is speaking of the fullness versus the earnest how many know the early rain is speaking of pentecost right that was the earnest of the inheritance and paul said we receive the earnest until the fullness so we know that we, that the earnest was poured out at pentecost now since pentecost there's been the moderate rain like Azusa Street, right? God has poured out His Spirit at different times since Pentecost. That's the moderate rain. That's where we see the main rains in between the first rains. But then you have, last but not least, we have the spring rains or the latter rain. Are you listening to me, brothers and sisters? And God says in His Word in the first month, I just remembered, it's in the book of Joel is where that verse is. It says the, the, the early rain and the latter rain together in the first month. The first month is barley harvest. That's when the barley harvest begins. Are you listening? So if we are between January and April, somewhere between these months, right now spiritually, then we know that the next thing to take place is not just the latter rain, but the latter rain and the former rain together. Amen. The fullness of the Spirit is going to be poured out in the first month. Now, when we look at the verse of Scripture in Song of Solomon that says, Lo, the winter is past and the rain is over and gone. That lets us know that the latter rain has passed. That means the next thing to take place is the barley harvest begins. The flowers appear on the earth. Are you getting this, brothers and sisters? It's springtime. Spiritually. Amen? It's springtime. Barley harvest, the first fruits out of the barley, will take place in the spiritual springtime. Praise God. I do believe we are in that time right now, spiritually. Now, as you can see here on this Hebrew calendar, what follows is the wheat harvest during the dry season. There'll be no rain during the wheat harvest. There'll be no rain all during the, the great tribulation. There'll be no rain of the Spirit poured out. You see that? From April all the way down through to, uh, well, to the end. There's no rain. The Spirit of God will not be poured out. Do you, do you see why now? The church, the wise virgins are saying to the foolish virgins, we can't share our oil. They need that oil. 
The oil is a type of the Holy Spirit. The rain is a type of the Holy Spirit. The wind is a type of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so it's going to be dry during the time after the barley harvest is completed. After the church is caught up. Now, I don't know if you can see this or not. <clears throat> but here, the barley harvest be is completed. Okay? The church is caught up here. This is where the church is caught up. Barley harvest begins. This is where the bride is caught up. In the first month. Where the latter or the former rain and the latter rain is together. Amen? And this is in the book of Joel. Okay. So now, look where the grapes and the figs, you know, the Bible talks about the grapes, the tra trampling of the grapes. That's during the summer heat. Folks, God lays it out for us, doesn't he? It's all right here. The plan of God is right here. So now let's look at a different, let's look at a different graph or a different chart. Hallelujah. These are the biblical holy days. Which are holidays. That's where holiday came from, by the way. Holy days. And uh, they changed the spelling of it. But uh, look, look here with me. We were just talking about the spring season. Now look how this, look how this works, brothers and sisters. Passover, first fruits, Pentecost. Now, if we match this up with the harvest, and unfortunately, I cannot put these side by side right now. I wish I could. I wish I had the ability to do this. But if we were to overlay the calendar that we were just looking at with this chart, that we're looking at right now, you would see that the, that the Passover uh, takes place after, listen to me, after the barley is already beginning to grow. How do we know that? Because when they came out of Egypt, it was called the Passover, right? And the scripture says that the barley was smitten, but the wheat had not been smitten because it not, had not yet grown up. But the barley was smitten. So for the barley to be smitten, that tells me that it was barley harvest time, Passover. Are you getting this, brothers and sisters? So what is it that takes place after the Passover, or after the death of Jesus Christ, is the first fruits, which is the resurrection. Hallelujah. The bride is going to be taken in this time. First fruits, resurrection. Look what takes place in between the Passover and first fruits or the resurrection. Unleavened bread. What did Paul say about the unleavened bread? He said to keep the feast with unleavened bread, right? To not have any leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. We are to keep the feast with unleavened bread. Can't have any leaven. If you're going to be in the first fruits and caught up in the, the, the resurrection before the church is caught up, notice the church is not going to be caught up until where it says Pentecost, the Holy Spirit. That's where the church will be caught up. 
This is where God will pour out his spirit. Listen, brothers and sisters. This is where the church, in between the first fruits and Pentecost, is where the church is going to receive their oil. And when I say oil, I don't mean the oil they have right now. I mean the oil that they have besides the oil they have right now. Because because, uh, the wise virgins took oil with their lamps. They already had oil, but they took extra oil. And this is where they're going to gain that oil, is between the first fruits and Pentecost. Now, realize folks, they're going to have to gain that oil before the bride leaves, before first fruits. Why? Why would the oil have to be given before the bride leaves? Remember what we just read or just looked at in the, in the harvest? There'll be no more rain. The Spirit of God will not be poured out anymore. This will be dry season. So do you see how important the ministry of the bride and the Spirit is right now? The Spirit and the bride say, come. And all that are athirst, come and drink of the water of life freely. Now, who is the spirit and the bride speaking to? The wise virgins, obviously, are listening and paying attention because this is where they got their oil. Are you listening? That's what we're doing. That's what this ministry is. Make sure that you're getting all the oil you can get. Amen. You're going to need it. You're going to need the Spirit of God. You're going to need to be filled with the Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. So, we've got to keep the spiritual feast without any leaven. Cannot be any hypocrisy. Cannot be any leaven of the Pharisees. Amen? It must be sincerity and truth. Purge out the old leaven. There can't be any leaven. Hallelujah. Between the cross and the resurrection is where the sanctification takes place. That's why Paul the Apostle said, that I might know him in the power of his resurrection, being made conformable unto his death. Paul understood it starts with Passover. It starts with the cross. And sanctification takes place in between that and then the power of the resurrection, glory to God. This is the first fruits. So where are we right now? I believe the bride right now is in the place of unleavened bread where we must make sure that we have no leaven that can puff us up. Got to make sure that we're totally pure of any leaven. Amen? Why was it the children of Israel, when they came out of Egypt, had no leaven in their bread? They didn't have time to put the leaven in the bread. It was very... uh, uh, urgent that they would leave out of Egypt that night. Amen? They had their staves in their hands, their staffs in their hands, and they had their shoes on their feet, and they had to be ready to go. So the women did not have time to put the leaven in the bread. And that's why, to this day, there is what's called the Feasting of Unleavened Bread. Now, that's not something we observe physically anymore. The ceremonial laws have been done away. But spiritually speaking, we are to keep the feast without leaven. If we're going to be in the first fruits, 
brothers and sisters, there cannot be any leaven. Can't be any hypocrisy. Can't be any pride. Amen? God's got to remove all the pride, all the hypocrisy, all the self-righteousness. Isn't it any wonder, brothers and sisters, that God has had Brother Joseph giving messages concerning self-righteousness just in the last few days? Because we're getting closer to the first fruits. We're getting closer to the resurrection. We're getting closer to that latter rain and the former rain together in the first month. Glory to God, brothers and sisters. And what is the Lord saying? The Spirit is saying, rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. Hallelujah. What follows after that is the figs, the grapes. That's the wrath of God, people. The figs has to do with Israel being gathered in the uh, 12,000 of each tribe. The figs. Put it forth her green figs. Amen? Let's go to that verse. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. The fig tree putteth forth her green figs. That's Israel. And the vines with their tender grape give a good smell. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Now, when Jesus came to Israel the first time, There was no fruit. He cursed the fig tree. But notice what it says. The fig tree putteth forth her green figs. Amen. The Lord will yet choose Jerusalem. There's a remnant God is going to save out of Israel. And then after that will be the tender grapes that will be trampled in the wrath of God. Amen. I I know that I was not able to lay this out the way I would like to. I just am so limited with the software and what I've got to work with here, folks. I wish I could do side-by-sides. I wish I had better equipment. I wish I could do this in much more of a professional manner. But I hope that something that is being shared with you right now helps you to understand where we are spiritually. I believe we're in the time of the flowers appearing upon the earth the time of the singing of the birds and the voice of the turtle in the land. I believe that. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Now, we could just be right at the end of this verse. The rain is over and gone because have we really received the the rain, all the rain that we need? No. So let's go again to this verse in in James. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he receive the early and the latter rain. Are you listening, brothers and sisters? God the Father is waiting for the early and the latter rain. When did he say the early and the latter rain would come? He said in the first month, brothers and sisters, in the time of the barley harvest. Are you listening to me? It's where we are right now, glory to God. So what is it that we are looking for? What do we need? To be brought to perfection, we need that latter rain and the former rain together. Amen? So what does that mean? That means it's not enough that they were filled with the Spirit back at Pentecost. You need to be filled with the Spirit now. That's the early rain. And then God fills you with the Spirit more and more from that point. And then eventually... There'll be the fullness of God's spirit will be poured out. And that is the latter and the former rain together in the first month. Are you listening, brothers and sisters? 
So what is the overall message here? You need more of the Spirit. You need more oil. You need more rain. You need more of Jesus. Listen, we need more of God, brothers and sisters. Let's be hungry and thirsty after righteousness, brothers and sisters. I hope that this message is stirring you up to help you to understand where we are. I hope this message is stirring a hunger and a thirst in you because that's what it's to do. Amen? Glory to God, we're not anxious. We're not in a hurry. Look at the next verse. What does it say? Be also patient. Establish your hearts. The coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. What is God telling us right now? He's saying, be patient. Establish your heart. Amen? Be patient. Even as the Father is waiting for the latter rain, so you and I should be waiting for the latter rain. Amen? We need the latter rain and the former rain together if we're going to be caught up to God and to his throne. If we're going to experience the resurrection, if we're going to experience the fullness of God's, uh, in, uh, of the inheritance and the fullness of the spirit, the fullness of the promise of the father, brothers and sisters, then we've got to have the earnest first. How many know the earnest is the down payment? the dowry for the bride. If you're not filled with the Spirit right now, you're not going to receive the fullness. You've got to have the earnest first. You've got to have the down payment first. Hallelujah. Have you been filled with the Holy Spirit? Can you say that you've been filled with the Holy Spirit? With the evidence of speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance? There's a lot of folks in this hour that are being filled with another spirit, but it's not the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? Have you truly been filled with the Holy Spirit? And since you uh, were filled with the Holy Spirit, are you continuing to be filled with the Spirit, more of the Spirit, until the fullness, until the fullness... The earnest until the fullness, glory to God. Now, I want to share one last thing with you. How many know that when Peter was inspired by the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost, he said, this is that which the prophet Joel spoke in the last days, God would pour out of his spirit. But if you go to the book of Joel, it doesn't say pour out of his spirit. It says pour out his spirit. So why didn't Peter say pour out his spirit? Because on the day of Pentecost, God was not pouring out his spirit. He was pouring out of his spirit. He did not pour out the fullness on the day of Pentecost. He poured out the earnest of the inheritance. You that have been filled with the Holy Ghost and speak with other, other tongues as the spirit gives you utterance, I want you to understand you have received the earnest until the fullness. We are in the hour, we're in the time, we're in the season of the fullness of the Spirit of God being poured out. God is going to pour out His Spirit upon all flesh, but only the bride is going to receive the latter rain into the vessel along with the former rain and the moderate rain. And be, she's going to experience the fullness to perfection. Amen. Why will the bride experience the fullness and others won't? Because the bride has received the good seed a hundredfold. Remember Jesus talked about 30-fold, some 60-fold, and some hundredfold. Not everybody is willing to accept the hundredfold seed of God's word. That's why they will not experience perfection. Amen. The 30-fold and the 60-fold is not perfection. You're still lacking. Amen. 
You need the hundred percent. You need the hundredfold. If you're going to be brought to perfection, fruit to perfection, hundredfold. If you do not have the word of God and believe the word of God for full, complete perfection, blameless, harmless, without fault, innocent before the throne of God, you cannot attain to that. The Spirit of God being poured out in fullness is only going to make the difference in those that have the fullness of the truth. Otherwise, it'll be 30-fold and some 60-fold. Now, are you willing to settle for less when God has made provision for a hundred-fold? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Amen? Now, again, again, we look at this graph or this chart. The resurrection, the first fruits. Paul the Apostle said, that I may be found in him, having not my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that righteousness that comes through faith. Amen. The church as a whole will not attain to the hundredfold. The church as a whole will end up being left behind because they did not have the hundredfold full because they did not have the fullness of the spirit that's why the church will only be caught up in the middle of the air they don't have the power of the spirit to get all the way to the throne but the bride is going to have the fullness which will take her all the way to the throne of god to the fullness a glorified body where mortality is swallowed up in immortality are you listening The bride will experience immortality without going to the grave. Are you listening? The church will follow afterwards and experience a change, a sudden blissful change, and also experience immortality without dying, without going to the grave. But those that died in Christ Jesus, that are asleep in Christ Jesus, those that are alive will not prevent them. They were also going to be caught up in the middle of the air. But listen, they went the way of the grave. So only the bride is going to experience the hundredfold perfection. Amen? Praise the Lord. You know that I have told you the truth. You know that. Now, it's up to you to attain to it, to apply it, to hunger and thirst after perfection. God has made provision for you and I to be perfected, to be complete. Amen? And this scripture we were looking at in Song of Solomon, it says the flowers appear upon the earth. The flowers are perfect. They've come to peak. They're at full bloom. They're ready to be plucked. Amen? Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters in Christ, listen to me. The fullness of the Spirit is coming. Hallelujah. Are you going to be ready to receive all the fullness of the Spirit of God when God pours out His Spirit upon all flesh? Very soon, the Spirit of God is going to be poured out upon all flesh. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, there's so much more I could share with you, but I think I'm going to stop there. I hope this will stir a hunger and a thirst in you for, for what we have to share with you after this. God bless you.